In June of 1867, American writer and humorist Mark Twain embarked on what he called a great pleasure cruise aboard the steamship Quaker City. His travel companions, religious pilgrims and wealthy tourists. Their ultimate destination, the Holy Land. So began a new age of popular travel to Palestine as American tourists set out to experience the storied places of the Bible for themselves. But what they found was often not what they expected. American travelers were forced to reconcile the stark reality of Ottoman-controlled Palestine with their sentimental expectations of the Holy Land. Few places on earth held as strong a grip on the imaginations of 19th century Americans as Palestine. American Protestants felt a deep connection to the Holy Land they knew so well from biblical stories. Sacred sites, at once familiar and mysterious, tugged at American hearts and minds. But the Levant at the turn of the century was terra incognita, little visited and largely undocumented by the West. Political upheaval would soon bring change. Napoleon's campaign to wrest Palestine from the Turks in 1799 led to the creation of the first modern Holy Land maps. Egyptian occupation from 1831 to 1841 drew Western political attention. With the establishment of diplomatic relations between the United States and Turkey in 1832, the door to Palestine was opened to the West. Among the first to journey to the Holy Land were missionaries, religious pilgrims, biblical scholars, and archaeologists. Motivated by religious zeal and biblical scholarship, these early visitors published detailed accounts of their experiences. Their narratives piqued American curiosity and shaped popular notions about the land and its religious, historic, and cultural significance. American theologian and biblical geographer Edward Robinson traveled to the Holy Land in 1838 to make the first scientific survey of biblical sites. His conclusions, a combination of science and sentiment, would lay the foundation for modern biblical archaeology and inspire future exploration. Writers and artists, like Scottish painter David Roberts, also traveled to the region, returning with emotional interpretations of the land and its people. Roberts' sumptuous sketches and lithographs reinforced Americans' idealized notions of biblical landscapes. By mid-century, American interest in foreign travel had become a passion. The advent of steam-powered ships and trains made travel to the Holy Land possible for a larger audience of Americans. Writer Herman Melville visited Palestine in 1856 and found his naive expectations shattered by its bleak reality. His experience would inspire Clarell, a poem and pilgrimage in the Holy Land. After the Civil War, steamships were recommissioned for the tourist trade and expeditions for wealthy tourists were organized. Mark Twain's unprecedented Holy Land excursion signaled a new era of popular travel to the Levant. Twain, working for a San Francisco newspaper, chronicled his four months journey via dispatches back to America. His characterizations of the Holy Land were blunt and irreverent. He described the region as the most hopeless, dreary, and heartbroken piece of territory out of Arizona. With biting satire, he mocked the emotional reactions of his travel companions, and at times, himself, to holy sites. When published as The Innocents Abroad, Twain's travelogue became the most influential book on Holy Land travel in America and launched his celebrity as a social satirist. Americans embraced his stories and were eager to follow his footsteps to the East. Before the century was out, American Holy Land travelers would number in the thousands. Join the 19th century American travelers on their journeys to the Holy Land. Read accounts by explorers, generals, writers, and former and future presidents who made the journey and whose experiences and reactions are as emotional and complex as the history of the land itself.